sign a few players. Um, have you ever experienced anything like this in your in your tenure and career? I'm sure I'm ha I have, you know, along the way. But I mean, we got good young players. We're excited about. It's a lot of fun to go out there, and we just had a great practice today. It's a lot of fun to go out there and work with these guys. They're hungry. They got opportunity. We look at it that way. Like a lot of people look at it as we're missing people. We look at it as a great opportunity for these kids to, or these young men, excuse me, uh, to show what they've got. We're really excited about them. Is there anything different about an offensive lineman um, plugging in a new offensive lineman versus plugging in a new receiver, a new quarterback, a new running back? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, because those guys work together as one. You know, they're they're they may be five O linemen on the field at one time, but it's one one unit. You know, having to work together. So sometimes it takes some time to uh, get the new guy or new guys. Uh, you know, in tune with everyone else. But I think like Justin came in the last game, played guard and played center at a high level, and fit in really nicely with those guys. I think that, you know, that I'm I'm good with where we're going up front. I think that you know we'll be just fine as long as we stay healthy. You know, with who we got up there right now. Uh, we just continue to be physical, continue to run the football. How was your, how was your patience with Heinrich on Saturday? Uh, I was patient. I was, I was very patient. You know, and it was just – it's one of those things you, you have those games, like when you're growing, like that's his fifth, fifth start, I believe, uh, not making excuses for me or him. Uh, but sometimes you just have – you know, you have bad days where the timing's not there and the ball's not coming out like it should. Uh, but he fought through it and he persevered. You know, he came back and made that play. That was crucial to get that ball to Malachi and just kind of let – Everybody take a breath and and move forward through the fourth quarter. Did you ever? Did you, was there ever any discussion to go to number two? Uh, no, no. We were just, I mean, discussing like, hey, what can we do to get you in rhythm? What can we do to get you more comfortable? Because once he sees, it's like any other any quarterback. One, they just need one play, you know, to kind of get him back into and get him on track. Yeah. You know, um, you're excited for the opportunity to be in Denver to get the first little college season, like the heart and soul of this team. How difficult? Uh, for him personally, it's it's awful. Uh, for a kid who cares so much about his teammates, like he cares about, he cares about everyone. I mean, just he is a walking cliche, and I mean that as a compliment. Everything that you have ever heard in your life on a on a motivational or a leadership uh, pamphlet, he is. I mean, his heart and soul is Nebraska Cornhusker football. He lives and dies it for him, his teammates, and the coaches. And so when we saw that happen, I mean, it was just. Is gut wrenching. You don't want anybody to get hurt, but you especially don't want a guy like that that's invested so much of his time and so much of his life into this program. And uh, you know, wishing him a speedy recovery. And you know, we'll be with him along the way, and he's going to be with us as much as he can. You know, I just, you first got here, you're trying to figure out who's what. What about Evan Jenkins uh, popped out to you? Uh, just super athletic, can bend, uh, powerful, uh, powerful lower body, create can create. You know. With leverage and stuff can create power, uh, move guys off their spots. So you know he's he's been a guy from day one that's shown flashes of, you know he's going to have a chance to be a pretty dang good offense alignment. You know as he continues to grow and play. How have you seen teams defend Heinrich this way? I mean, it looked like Illinois brought a lot of pressure. Northwestern didn't really blitz so much. And, and how is that challenging to kind of figure out how they're going to go at him each week? Uh, everybody has their own little little niches. You know we've seen everything from a lot of edge pressure to rushing three to. You know, mush rushing and just kind of keeping him in the pocket. So I mean, you got to be ready for everything. Uh, but you kind of, you know, after a couple of games, there's only so many ways that they can they can you know, try to affect how he's you know managing the game. So we just try to do a good job of replicating that in practice. Uh, we had a great practice. coach did a nice job today. Like coach was the D coordinator today with uh, the the um, Purdue defense and uh, was out there and it was really good for our guys, just giving us the multiple looks and the scout team was really playing really really hard for for coach obviously. So that was really nice. Ryan Walters is known for his defensive mind. As, as you watch what they're doing now and maybe look at some Illinois stuff from last year, what, what, what sticks out? Uh, very similar, but very sound, complex. I mean, you see some of the adjustments they make when motions occur. They may have a pressure called and a motion, you know, motion occurs and how they're able to communicate and make sure that pressure is correct uh, is some high-level stuff. It's pretty pretty neat to watch. You know, Don't like going against guys like this that are you know very, very – uh, discipline in what they do, but you can tell just a very disciplined defense. They play with great leverage. Uh, they run to the football. They like to hit you. Uh, so it's going to be a it's going to be a huge test for us, you know, to make sure that we're moving the ball right and and, and continuing to gain field position throughout the game. How many head coaches have been around that have run the scouts? Is that is that the norm? Well, coach didn't like a lot of coaches. I mean, he he pretty much is what he says he is. I mean, he's he's just a coach. You know, he's our boss. He's our head coach. He's the coach of the program. But I mean, when he's out there, he's no different than 
you know, the GA, like he's out there just coaching his butt off. And so I didn't know he was going to do it until practice. And so it was a good little competition. He got after me a little bit, but it was good for us. What is the level of willingness among coaches to evaluate guys who aren't starting for call-ups or position changes in the season? Uh, our our, our uh, program, that's, what, that's who we are. Like we're continuing. It's, it's iron sharpening iron, it's, and it's not – us just saying that as a, you know, just to say, because that's what coaches say, like every single day you have an opportunity to compete. We do team compete. Our, our organization is built around team compete. You have a chance to go out there. Every, every level on the depth chart gets a chance to participate in full, fu- full football. So we're able to evaluate them and continue to evaluate them. As you see, guys five weeks ago that were on the scout teams are now starting. And that's, that is just a result of us continuing to just practice, practice the way that we practice, compete the way that we compete. And again, it's just a, a reflection of iron sharpening iron and how we do things. When guys change positions within a season, is it out of necessity generally, or or you guys sometimes see something in those? Players? Sometimes it might be necessity, but then there's a lot of times of just maximizing your roster and making sure that you know you might be the second best uh, linebacker, but you may be the best nickel, or you may be the second best receiver, you may be the best whatever. You know, it's just maximizing the roster, making sure that we get the best guys, uh, the most productive guys on the field at one time. What have you seen from Emmett Johnson these last few games? And is that lead back role, is that his now? Uh, it's, again, I'm, I promise I'm not trying to say, but I mean, it's, it's going to be based on this week and, and just how they practice this week. Uh, you know, he's had two, two good games. He's, you know, he's reliable. We know where he's going to be. Uh, for the most part, he's, he's done a really nice job of taking care of the football. He's done a nice job in pass protection. So his role continues to grow. Uh, and just really proud. You didn't ask me, but just really proud of, you know, AG just keeps practicing and keeps just working on securing the football and doing things the right way on the football field. And that's really good to see is where he's come in the last two weeks. Obviously, you don't want to lay the ground on the, lay the ball on the ground as much going forward. Has that been something that sort of popped up more in games or have you, have you seen it, good ball security in practice with that or? Lack of we, I have to do a better job of making sure we have good ball security. Like in our ball security drills that we do daily, like I've got to make sure that they are, they are, they are being operated and executed at a high level, and that's, I've got to make sure that's happening consistently. Uh, you know, it's it's we don't, it's terrible the ball security and the amount of, the amount of times the ball is on the ground right now. Like it's unsatisfactory. It's embarrassing. So, I we have to fix it. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's, you can't be reactionary. You can't go back now and start doing, like, you just keep doing what you're doing and trust your techniques and just doing it better uh, daily. But that, that is definitely something that we talk about daily and it's something that's a, a huge emphasis for us, knowing that with a defense like ours, if we can just win the turnover margin, you have a chance to win, you know, win some games. What do you know about Ryan Walters and just his defensive background? Obviously, when he did Illinois last year, got a lot of people were saying uh, I don't. I've never met him personally, but I, I do admire the way he plays defense. You know, just again, when you watch the tape as a coach and you see the different adjustments he's making, the formations, formational adjustments. Uh, again, like I was saying, sometimes he's got you know different calls for different people to do things, and then emotion changes from three by one to two by two, and they're able to communicate with ease and uh, precision. And again, judge a lot of defense how they run to the football and play with pad level. And you know, they play with pad level, they play with length, and they run to the football. So I think that's a very well coached defense that's going to be tough to move the ball against. Thank you, Thank you guys.